All right, got a uh, man. Appreciate coming in. I know you've uh, you've been getting after it all morning with some some of your promotional stuff and media stuff, but uh, this is quite a big deal for us. We've sort of been building up at YKTR Sports, but thanks thanks for coming in, Mark. I appreciate the time, man. So um, on the media stuff, I know I noticed I was watching a little bit of the the uh, the lead up to it about a month ago. You and you, it's pretty obvious that you and Paul uh, have got a relationship. You've been mates before, but the last kind of week, I feel like it's been amping up a little bit. It's been a bit of talk happening, and yeah, man, that's all that is talk. I uh, I don't know about the relationship side of it, but uh. Uh, <laughs> we've had lunch a couple of times. To put it that way, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you and you keep saying that you know you have to shout the lunch and. And he still well, wants he says coffee, so but we all argue about different things, you know. I mean, um, you know, he's said a few things, and I've caught him out, and he's like, "I didn't say that," but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So um, I think the the one uh, bit that I read about you, you went to what go watch the the Barry Hall, Hall fight. Correct. Uh, what were your thoughts on and how that yeah how that fight played out and and the draw the draw result? I thought it was a uh, quite an even fight. I thought it was. Uh, I was, you know, I had a lot, a lot of fun though, you know. Um, I was drunk though, but I had a lot of fun. It was, it was a great night. I just uh, um, didn't feel they had a, a lot of people there, maybe because they had basketball next door or something. But um, okay, it was a great uh, event. I thought it was quite even. Yeah, and, and so what's your what's your thoughts on? Um, I, know, I know, like you know, gal has got a, a fighting background. There's been exhibition fights in the past. You know where. You know, we we try to cover all sports, but you know, we come from a rugby league background. All the boys rugby league and. We've watched a few of the rugby league boys box in the past and some of it's been a tough watch, but what's your thoughts on the exhibition fights and rugby leagues sort of tr- trying to half promote boxing as well? I, I don't have any issue with, uh, you know, ex-footy players or footy players fighting in the boxing circles. I think it helps boost um, the local fighting of the boxers. You know, I think it helps them grow their following uh, here in Australia and helps uh, Australian boxing grow. I think I, I have no issue with that. Yeah. Um, this fight is here because... Um, because Galland uh, called me out five years ago. Well, he said he didn't, but um, him and Lucas Brown called me out uh, while I was with this uh, other company. Yeah, um, and I won't mention that company, but um, okay, we'll stay away from that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be here for days talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, so Big Daddy Lucas Brown called you out. Um, going back to your your, your background, um, I think did, did you say you only had a couple of fights previously boxing, and then you went to K one. And then obviously the company you don't want to talk about, but mixed martial arts. Yeah. So what what, my, what was the reason behind sort of not doing boxing for so long? Well, my um, I was training at Mundine's gym a long time ago. I started, I had my first pro fight, boxing fight. I went, you know, I was still smoking and drinking. I went straight from the, I think the Bondi Diggers pub, you know, having a beer and straight into the boxing uh, ring of my first pro fight. I got roped into it by Barry Raff. Thanks, Barry. And I lost it to you, the John, uh, the John Wyborn, John the Digger Wyborn. Yeah. The next fight I had was in Central Coast, a boxing fight, and um, you know the Englishman b- broke his hand on my head. So, and that was my stint in pro boxing. And then yeah. I went to um, kickboxing. I won the world title in K one. Um, I'm the only one from this side of the world here that's ever won it, <laughs> and uh, that's something I'm proud yeah. of. But, and then I went to uh, was offered a, to fight in a company called Pride, which yep. was MMA. And I went to um, after that went to a company called Dream, and then on to um, the other company. Yeah, so yeah, talking about the mix, what was the the aspect of the the mixed martial arts that that sort of attracted you to that? Because you know you, you you're famous for your walk off knockouts, um, walking around. It looks yeah. like disrespect, it's, but it's it's a, for me, you know, watching it, it looks like it's respect because you you know you got the job done and then you just walk away because there's no need for it. But because you got all that power with boxing, why did what you know what uh, attracted you to go to K one and mixed martial arts more so than boxing? Well, um, K1, to be honest, was um, uh, great because you know, I was working a full-time uh, a job um, a, as a laborer at the pharmaceutical factory while making tablets for uh, Blackmore's, a, p- a place called Tabco, Manly. Yep. But, um, you know, I made, in uh, 28 minutes, I'd made more money than I um, it made in six months. In Brooklyn. I thought I was rich, you know, but it was 10000 but $10,000 to $10,000. Was, it was good, so I pursued it a bit more, and that's why I pushed... Um, um, to be in a, a kick fighter, um, you know, um, kickboxing, a, a kickboxer, yep. and I um, mean, you know, I got my first pro contract as a twenty, a twenty-seven year old. You know, I was still working a full time. I got my won the world title, got a, my first work contract, and I was making. I think our dollar was like uh, half of the American dollar. So if you made a dollar, you you, you know, in American, um, it would be like two dollars for Australian. So yeah, okay. But I um, you know, like I said, I. I I've been fighting for a long, long time, uh, I, and um, 
it, it just evolved from from kickbox to MMA because the offer of money was was really good. You know, I was yeah. offered um, two hundred fifty thousand US at that time to fight in a, a mixed martial arts company. I I'd, the reason why I went there was because of the money, but not only that, the challenge had gone for me because I'd won. You know, the, the fire burning me to, to fight to be the world's best in K one had gone because I'd won that the first year I tried. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, after that, uh, you know, Pride came along and they were battling for, you know, TV rights in Japan. Yep. And um, they offered me a great um, a great deal of money to fight to in the company called Pride MMA. I didn't know what this sort of fighting was. I only used to be a big fan of Dragon Ball Z. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I was like, when they asked me, the reporter says, oh, Hanto-san, because they called me Hanto-san in Japan. They goes, oh, you... Uh, you would like to fight Vegeta. Yeah. And I'm thinking, Vegeta? <laughs> and I said, like, no, no, I, I'm Goku. You know what you're talking yeah. about, bro? You know? Is that where the blonde hair comes from too? The, yeah. the love for Dragon Ball Z? Well, I mean, they're called the, the race is called the Saiyan race. You yeah. know, I'm, yeah. a, I'm Samo. Yeah. So, I mean, my, they called me the Super Samo. That's, oh, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, I got to fight. I'm in, I'm in tune with the thing. So, um, that's where this came from. And um, that's how I got to, uh, to fight in MMA. The challenge was there to... to because I thought it was an easy sport. I didn't realize how hard it was. And I, when I first went back to NZ and trained with uh, Steve Oliver, he was like 80, 90 kilograms. But, but bro, man, when I see them rolling around the ground, I'm like, just, just get up, bro. You know? yeah. and, and then he goes, yeah, come here and get up. Yeah. And then the next six, eight weeks, I was getting hammered. He was just knee riding my face, neck, everything. I was like, damn, nigga, this guy's crazy. Yeah. And that's when I realized this sport is a different killer. First, I felt like a... A goldfish in front of a you know a tank full of sharks. Yeah, I was a you know white belt fighting black belts uh, with years and years of experience. I mean, I I was doing an interview in Japan, in Pride. I had some of the best uh, fighters in the world. You know, Fedor, Coleman, everybody was there, and they they asked me. The reporters asked me, um, you know, because they were taking the piss over. They asked me. I didn't think so. But they said, "Oh, Mark, uh, how many hours of jujitsu and grounds have you done?" And I said, "You know, I was really proud." I said, "Yeah, I did about eight hours." And the whole room, <laughs> they just started cracking up. They started laughing, and I'm like, "This, what? What are you laughing about?" It was like it was a good eight hours. Yeah, you know, to them that's like uh, they do that in a day or some rubbish. You know, that's crazy. So you know, that's where I was. I was so out of depth there with with my um, level of fighting skill and, and years and years of fighting they have. Yeah, which I didn't have anything yeah, behind me. I came green. Body. Yeah, and that's why I think a lot of the Japanese fans adored me, and they understood about man, this guy is actually he's probably crazy. Yeah, just, just like so him. raw. <laughs> he's Obviously. so raw. He has no idea what he's getting into, but he's here. Yeah, he, he's turned up, and he's turning up every time. Yeah, he's uh, having a crack. Well, we talked a little bit just before we jumped on. One of my boys, uh, Troy Savage, did a bit of work. You did, did a little bit What's of up, a Troy, yeah. with him. He uh, he mentioned in your book. I've, you know, he he told me on Wednesday I've got to read your book as well. But you talk about growing up in South Auckland. Correct. Bit of scrapping a fair bit back in the day. Yeah. Is that why probably you took it for granted a little bit going in? You just used to fight and you just thought it was going to be that, that sort of brawling when you when you start off in the in the K1 and in, in the MMA? Is that sort of how you thought the fighting was going to play out or not understanding the jiu-jitsu side of it and, and whatnot? Well, that was for, for MMA. My story uh, background is, I mean, I mean um, before I was, I mean, I was 15 when I first went to jail. And my story, my background is, um, is, is kind of, like a lot of people from out uh, uh, south, uh, you know, they really shitty cards dealt to them by God. And, you know, and the thing about me being a great fighter is I'm a survivor. Yeah. And then, and that's why I flourished as, as a fighter because that was my calling. I feel I wanted to be a footy player. just yeah. wasn't good enough. Yeah. And I got out of jail and it was uh, trying to play footy and that was uh, already a battle uphill. But I'm um, fighting, keep coming to me, helping me play around and everything. And, um, you know, I'm being one of the most successful fighters from this side of the world. And that's... Not because of uh, street fight. That's I started my first fight from uh, from a street fight. Yeah, <laughs> you know the bouncer at uh, this place called DTM is. Um, you know he saved me from being arrested from the cops after we brawling out front of his club, and then you know that four days later I was fighting in that same nightclub, um, my first Muay Thai fight. So yeah. and that's um, and that was that. an experience. Yeah. So I mean, I that, that that's how I got into fighting. <laughs> yeah, so scrapping, yeah, scrapping got you straight in. You mentioned a little bit um, playing. Playing rugby as well. Do you play rugby league, rugby union? I, I've heard you mention before yeah. that David Tool was sort of around and yeah. Ruben Wiki. Ruben yes, Wiki sir. was around. The OG man, Ruben Wiki. That's Wickey, why I was a big fan of, of uh, players, Canberra. Yeah. yeah, Ruben's. That's why I was a favorite. Um, that's why I always followed Canberra Raiders. They had uh, you know Ruben Roos made it. I thought you know uh, yep. everyone made it. Quinn Pongia. Right. I mean, they had, uh, they had guys like Laurie Daly, Mal Meninga, Surinan. I mean, they had Bradley Clyde in there. Bradley Clyde yeah. was like nineteen. Yeah. 
And that, that was that was you know I was like this man I, you know I was a big fan I wanted to be a footballer but like I said, my circumstances and um, you know people frowned upon uh, kids that went to jail at that time. You know I speak about it when I go to a few uh, different uh, uh, precincts in jail and I speak to the kids and I talk to them. I I walk into the jail and there's like forty of them young youths and um, you know they look at me because they you know they've got all these issues like I had and they're angry and they're looking at you like. You know, but as soon as I tell them, you know, when I was your age, I was in jail, the same thing. I had not many options. And they all they all come from here to here. Like, they want to fight. Yep. But then we sit down and they, they start, then they start listening. Yeah. And I explain to them, you know, it's a, um, you know, you can keep continuing to be a, st- a statistic, yep. you know, and um, end up in jail doing a 20, 30 year stint saying, you know, I blame my circumstance, I blame my situation my family my parents all this garbage yeah, a lot of that stuff's in your book as well troy said talking about your youth and, and growing yeah. up and and you had and, a, and you had a t- t- real tough childhood before that stuff happened before yeah. you started scrapping and and just uh, being one of the statistics that everyone has to pay for at the end of the day but um the good thing about people looking at it that that people can change and help to be a better part of the community because at the end of the day for me now i, I want to be a good part of the community and i am a yeah. good part of the community you know um, positive influence not someone that's in jail doing 30 years for murdering shit loads of people and saying, oh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, I blame this person, this person, that. But at the end of the day, when you're 15, 14, you, you're held accountable for your own mistakes by yep. the law. Yeah. You know, what's funny is I was in jail there and um, a guy, I was doing a camp in NZ, my, one of my first camps, and I saw the TV and, the, and this, this guy came up, uh, his name is Tana Pora. He just came up and I was like, this, oh, I know him. And I, I didn't read it probably because I was I was doing something. I'm not good at multitasking like a woman, but I, I'm, I was looking at it and it's like, all I saw was 20 years, this and that and this and that. Yeah. And then I, was, I called my wife at the time and, and I said, Jules, oh man, I seen one of the guys I know. He's, um, he was the youngest in jail and he was doing life. And I was like, I was like man, he just did 20 years. And then when I, later on, I, I was, you know, I was contacted by Dave Dobbin and a few other guys. He said, oh, we should try and get together, help this guy get out. Then I realized, this guy just finished doing 20 years. When I was in jail, mm. he was in jail doing, and he did 20 years. Yeah. And then when I saw him on the TV, I was like, holy shit, it wasn't, he didn't get 20 years, he just finished doing 20 years for a crime he didn't commit. You know, yeah. um, blood's got him out of it, which is crazy though. But um, anyway, he got up. I said, the first thing you do is you get a passport and get the fuck out of it, make sure your finances are secure. And then the next time he mentioned me, he was in fucking Sri Lanka. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's the one. That. <laughs> fuck, yeah. Good story there. Um, anyway. you, you've you've talked about yeah, obviously the the lead up. You're a big fan of Tyson, the, uh, the oh, ex, of course, yeah. The big the big ex, uh, exhibition fight against Roy Jones. I've got a so my earliest memory as well. A little backstory to this. My, my dad had a VHS ta- tape of the best of Roy Jones Jr. Oh, so yeah. when, when, Jones, when yeah. I grew up, like my introduction to boxing was Roy Jones Jr. And also everyone knows who fucking Mike Tyson is. So. Yeah. There was, that was like a fight. I didn't. I wanted it to be a draw, but what were your thoughts on the fight? Do you think it was? He's still in good shape, man. Mike's Bro, 50, he's better shape than me, man. Yeah, but I never watched the fight. I just saw a glimpse of it on okay. Facebook, to be honest. But um, he still looks sharp. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Mike and and both Roy Jones Jr. But um, you know, I think it was great. I don't know about the humanitarian aspect of it, you know, because they make money for themselves. To be honest, to start with, yeah. But I think it was great. I think yeah. it was a great fight. They both moved well. I think um. Tyson can still knock anyone out, even yeah. twenty year olds. I mean, <laughs> fuck is crazy. <laughs> it looked like Roy was very aware that he could knock him out too. He kept Probably. on moving around the ring, like that was his go to anyway, moving around the ring and, and jabbing and moving away. But I think that's the last thing that goes for heavyweight is the power. Yeah, but yeah. he did. But like he looked, he actually looked more conditioned than Roy in the end, which was a surprise. If if anyone knows, everyone probably expected wait, yeah. that maybe a bit like you know your fight. Everyone's saying that you you're potentially going to knock Gal out early, or if it goes to, you know if if it goes to six rounds, it's going to favor Gal. Where it was the opposite. It actually looked like Tyson was in better shape than Roy Jones in and the end. And that worked. Yeah, it's so. a surprise. But uh, hey, man, they're both top end fighters, and um, you know they did great. Yeah, beautiful. Mm-hmm. So let's let's move on to the fight with Gal yeah. as well. Uh, like I said before, everyone's sort of throwing out. Everyone thinks they're a boxing expert these days. I, I just, you know, said said what I said about how p- people think the fight's going to play out. How do you see it playing out? What you, what do you think? You can you talk about strengths or not give too much away with what you think Gal's good at and, and what he's bad at? Or I don't mind talking about. It. Like I said, uh, everyone knows my game plan is to not knock him out, but um, it's not gonna, it's not going to be how they think it is. You know, I understand about boxing yeah. and fighting and how it works. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not uh, no Barry Hall, that's for sure. I mean. <laughs> And I was at that fight, like I said, but I thought it was quite even, but, you know, I mean, I've got a huge, uh, different amount of arsenal than Barry Hall. Yeah. 
you know, so um, it'll be a different yeah. fight bit, bit longer, in, bit longer in the game than Barry Hall, but <laughs> uh, but apparently Barry Hall's been fighting a fair bit too. Like he's been around boxing. It's a different beast though when someone's been doing it for 20, 30 years though. Yeah, man, I've sat at the top table for a very long time now, especially with uh, some of the best competitors in the world, in the planet, and most of those fuckers were cheating. So you know. Yeah. So yeah. did you want to? Did you want to speak anything about the UFC or about what's going nah. on now? Or not really. No, I still it's, it's still going through the courts. And I whatnot. still got a couple of lawsuits going, and um, you know, I mean. End of the day, people know my stance on, on how they've operated and how they've done things and how they're still doing yeah. things to this to this day. And I think for all our fighters from this side of the world, I don't think it's sixteen uh, percent of the revenue yeah. isn't isn't fair. Yeah, I, I at all. I heard you speak about that recently. I didn't realize that yeah. was a number. I didn't realize that low. That's, that's it it's probably years. less, but yeah. that's the number it's been for twenty years. Probably less before that. Yeah. Um, and that's um, think about and you don't even know what they're making because at the end of the day. They didn't show you with there. They're private, you know. So, yeah. but with uh, bringing in a different, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So yep. let's move on Is to the more of the fight, um, fight stuff coming up. I just, I just, I, I just think it's unfair. And yeah. I think, like I said, I'm not talking okay. from someone from the couch. I'm talking from being part of this company and um, seeing everyone else, all the, all our fighters going through there, yeah, and uh, you know wanting to make change and and you know, on my other lawsuit trying to make it an even playing group. You know, this is like from a, a fight. 16 screws, you know, it's like I always say, it's not as strong as it used to be, but I use the right hand sometimes, you know. So. And you know, <laughs> Gal's about to find out, <laughs> he's about to catch those. Well, that too, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so what about what about any of the fighters that are still in the country? Are you able to still speak to them? Do Look, you, man, are I you got contact with boys from over like Izzy and, and Vulcan and all those sort of boys that are at the top of the game right now? Over well, I mean, I got stories with a few of them. I haven't got a story. But I, I got stories with a lot I of them. I know you hang out with Ty a fair bit. He's, he's come well, in here before. Ty. He's his own different beast. I'm not, <laughs> I don't want to speak there. That guy's, uh, as, that guy's out in the stratosphere, man. I mean, uh, Ty's his own, his own beast and he's going to do his own thing. I mean, he, I know, he knows that I love him. He's like family to me and how what he's going to do with his life and, and it only depends on him. Yep. Only he can change his circumstances because, I mean, he's like me and, uh, you know, younger though, but <laughs> on different circumstances. I mean, he reminds me, my son reminds me so much of him, the way he acts and how he does things. And I don't, I mean, he knows what to do at the end of the day. So yeah. it's on him. And these other fighters, like I said, I'm trying to do things on the other side because I'm out of that company now. I'm trying to help them on... on um, Just away from fighting and, and whatnot? Away from their company. I mean, the only way you can try and make change is, is, is by... Uh, I mean, I could have kept my mouth shut and, and, and got another work contract and retired there. Yeah. But, you know, I just, I just kept running into these cheaters and... And I, it just wasn't getting a fair go. So I kept, um, so these lawsuits are about getting a fair go for money yeah. and w for cheaters. And that's, that's what we're trying to do on this side. I mean, I mean, I can't really say much to the other fighters. I mean, I mean, they've got the, the platform. Um, um, what, what's good about it is, is everyone that's out there is getting educated about their circumstances and about how the UFC treats their fighters. Yeah. I mean, you don't make it when you make it there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, even look at uh, John Jones, one of the greatest fighters, well, the greatest cheats. He, he's asking for more money. I mean, you don't see a guy like Anthony Joshua or pa Joseph Parker or, you know, or Tyson Fury ask for more money. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I don't know, like I said, I, I don't know about Paul Gallen, but, you know, I'm, I, I, my first more is, is the fighting, the money. It, it provides options for my family. Yeah, that's and what so, it is. So is this, will this probably, will this be your last fight? You talked about no. maybe potentially doing this again. It depends. I mean, I, I love fighting. I mean, now I've got the spirit, but I love fighting. I am 46 years old. I can't do this forever. But I love, um, you know, it's better than any drug. It's, uh, the combat, uh, you know, it's like playing a footy going out there. You just want to get in there. But uh, with fighting, is, is, is a different beast. Yeah, I love fighting. I mean, it's good money. Yeah, I'll do it while I still can, and I want to. I want to retire happy. I was unhappy when I was working for that company, and they kept. I think for three years when I, I was working still in there, I was unhappy with that company. How they kept treating me. How they kept, um, and I kept telling them. You know, I kept uh, being vocal about it while I was working for them. Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching the, it's, it's a hard enough division as it is, the, the division you're fighting in and it's dangerous, but that fucking Brock Lesnar fight was Oh, dude, it's not even. he looked before that? Like it's, that. Not, it's not even about fighting the other competitors. Yeah. It's not even the other, it's, it's yeah. actually fighting the, the company. That's yeah. what shits me. The company fighting against them. It's like fighting against the system. It's, it's rubbish. Yeah. It's, it's, actually, it's actually horseshit because, you know, you get to a certain point and you think, okay, I'll win this fight, I get a shot. Okay. You get to a guy, he's cheating, they don't do nothing about it. And you're like, you know, and then, you know, for the seventh fight I got in a row of cheater, they forced me to fight. And that's what really pissed me off. Yeah. But anyway, fuck them. Yeah. 
Yeah, fuck him. Fuck you, see. I'm not watching anymore. No, I'm not doing it. Hey, uh, man, you, you, you ain't supporting the fighter. <laughs> you're not supporting the yeah, fighter yeah. when you're watching their company, bro. Yeah. I can tell you that right now. All right, yeah, so we'll, we'll finish off. We'll, pu- we'll pull back to Gal. Few of the media stuff. I think he spoke about it this morning. He's saying this is, uh, he's the underdog. Uh, it's, he's got nothing to lose because, you know, you've been in the game for a minute. What do you think about that mentality for him going in? Because I want to I want to mention another thing just after this that he's been he's talked about underdogs before and I mean so. I've been an underdog my whole life yeah you know <laughs> coming from where I came up you know I'm a fighter my whole life I don't you know like I said he's gonna have a hard uh, hard night of fighting you know it's been three years since I fought but um I've been training really hard camp's been going well and you know his gas tank might be big but a couple of good shots will take his gas tank away I know that. Yeah, well, I'm hoping for that walk, that walk off knockout that you're famous for, and like I said, he's talked about underdogs. He talked about the Queensland team. Got a couple of mates <laughs> that played for Queensland. Called them the worst, the worst Queensland team of all time. So, Gal, after the OG <laughs> knocks you out, come and catch these hands too, baby. Let's go. <laughs> hey, there you go. No, Gal, I ain't right right about that. I ain't about that. He's life, calling mate. you out. Like you called me out. He's he's calling you Let's out. See, mate. I got you. Big <laughs> Let's go. Thanks for coming on, brother. All right, man. Appreciate thanks for having me on. Appreciate it.